Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Dark Souls 2 lore through. Um, I decided to come here, I traded some stuff with the crows, I leveled up, etc, etc. And I uh, then, I didn't get anything, and then I uh, fought the pursuer here. Um, which, you know. I'm sorry, I didn't get on camera, but, you know, it's the Pursuer. We've seen it a million times before. Uh, trading to the uh, Crows, I got the old whip. Um, but I think we might have read this. The blessing is likely the work of a cleric, but whether the spell is good or evil is unclear. And then I thought I would show you this. Um, so, yeah, I hope this is not, like, completely undo my thing, but... I mean, this, I don't know if there's any lore for this or whatever, but. The nature of your being has changed, and now I'm a woman. I'm never going to get used to that. See, I'm a woman. And then I can get back in. I hope it keeps my beard. Now I am a man, so if you wanted to, uh, if you wanted to change your gender in the game without restarting or something, you can. Uh, it looks like there might be a few items here. Um, we do get a washing pole, a katana of unknown origin. The extremely long blade allows for strikes from great distance, but its construction makes it extremely fragile. I don't think this says anything. Nope. We do have the mannequin top. The top of the mannequins in Harvest Valley. The peculiar art of puppetry is a vestige of the two lost lands. A queen breathed life into these dolls with a very, the very miasma that afflicted her poison drenched bosom so that she will, would have slaves to serve her temperamental will. Um, so yeah, we, we knew about the mannequins in the Belfry Luna, uh, that were guarding the bell. Looks like then Alkin, they also made some mannequins that did different things. Similar, but different. Ring? Uh, yeah, we read that. Never mind. All right. I think we're good. Do I have a Pharaoh's Lock Stone? Nope. I guess next time I get that, I will do like a. Oops. I'll do like a. Uh, a loose ends video again. So there's plenty of places that we need to go. But we'll, we'll get there. Uh, the other reason I started here and not just back at Heart, Earth and Peak is that I realized that clan's back and stuff like that. I wanted to be able to talk to them uh, for the first time on camera. Uh, so let's see. Oh, fancy meeting you here. Speak up if you need anything at all, all right? Uh, and she still sells the same stuff. These stones may look. Some of them are used to smith. Some of them. None of the differences are either. No interest. I'll provide. You know how they call this place Drang Lake, right? Yes. Well, in the old lore, in stories and the like, they said it had another name. What was it? Well, I don't know. It's just something I heard. Since long, long ago, many kingdoms have risen and fallen on this very spot. Each like a great flame that turns to soot. Maybe that's why people don't remember much about the past. 
Yeah, it's been called Olefis, maybe Alkin and Ven. It's called Drang Lake, it's called Dr uh, Venheim. I got all the answers for you, Cloran. You see that blacksmith over there? Is he one of those hollows? No. He seems to keep eyeing me up. He sort of looks like my father. He's a blacksmith too, you see. The poor man's such a worrywart. But he wouldn't follow me out here, would he? <laughs> hmm. Does he love you, Cloanne? I was born in a land to the west, Bolgan. Famous for its merchants. There were great, bustling cities. But for me, they were suffocating. And so I set out in search of stones in faraway lands. There are dangers for certain, but I much prefer to live this way. But for the life of me, I can't remember how I ended up here. It's as if I were drawn to the place or lured in. Oh, I don't know. I think you might have been, Cloyan. So yeah, Moglin is from Volgan, I guess. Lanigrast is from Volgan. We got a city of Volganites here. Uh, Malentia's from Drang Lake, actually. She came from here. Uh, we don't know who the Crestfallen guy is. I don't remember his name. Um, Cre uh, Carillion is from Melfia. Lucy is from Lindelt. Kale's from Mira. We got a little bit of a bunch here. These stones, mates. None of the. No interest. Oh, I'd give me. My witless daughter finally came home. Just as oblivious as she's always been. Well, at least now I can keep an eye on her. Stones? Try asking my daughter. You might be surprised. Drat. <laughs> You're worse than my reckless daughter. Don't spend your whole life in transit, you hear? You'll need souls. I don't waste it. I'll be around. Cool. I'll provide whatever. You know how they call this place Drang Lake? Oi, mine. Shut up. Bearer of the seeks less this. Uh, so the other thing I did is I leveled up faith. Silly enough. And I guess I'm going to continue on. She has a little wand she flicks. This is like Harry Potter up in here. Um, now we can start to really get some life gems. Thank you. Alright, so now that we have 10 faith, of course I didn't even look. So this could be a waste of time, but I'm pretty sure it's 10 10. We should have 10 14 or 10 15 to speak to this guy. The dark stirs. I see it. The dark is sparked within you. My name is Elgin. I will track with you what you need. I need your lore. So he has a chaos rapier, an archdrake staff, an archdrake chime, a chaos shield. Rapier of darkness and chaos. Once a brilliant young sorcerer cast away his earthly desires, devoting himself entirely to the dark that bewitched him. Nebulous, inky, and serene, the dark holds an allure matched only by the fear it strikes in men's hearts. Could it be nature holding a mirror to mankind? So we learn a bit more about the dark here. Um, 
in Dark Souls 2. We learn a little bit about it in the DLC of, of Dark Souls, and obviously just in general, like, it's spattered throughout Dark Souls 1, but we, we start to learn to see how people um, use it and, and, and uh, mastered it, and and the kind of effects it brings, but, um, so yeah, we're hearing about casting away your earthly desires to be one with the dark, nebulous, inky, and serene is the description of the way the dark feels, and could it be nature holding a mirror to mankind? I mean, we know that the Dark Soul was found by the Furtive Pygmy, and that he supposedly split it up amongst all of mankind in the form of humanity. Um, so darkness and humanity are very closely linked, but of course we know that if they can't control it, like Manus, then you get humanity run wild and you have a problem. Staff of members of the Archdrake sect at Lindelt. In Lindelt, known for its clerics and their miracles, sorcery is believed to be a profane practice. But as with anything, such beliefs are part faith and part front, and this staff was born of that hypocrisy. I mean, Lindelt might be closer to cream in this game. I mean, we know that we have some interesting characters coming out of there and some weird descriptions about it. A sacred chime used by the members of the Archdrake sect of Lindelt. The land of Lindelt is governed by stringent laws, and those who dare defy them are punished without mercy. It is often the sinful who seek piety, spurred only by a selfish desire for salvation. So, humanity is nebulous, serene, peaceful. God's miracles are for the selfish. I don't know. Shield of Darkness. Once a brilliant sorcerer. Yep, same description. And it, what is it? It looks like. I don't know. Ring of Life Protection. Divine ring that watches over one's life, created by the students of Ivory Rones, Sage of Lindelt. It's Great protective power will protect you from any loss upon death, but after its power is spent, the ring will break. So... Okay, I mean, we know that the ring of life... I mean, so this is nullifies death, but breaks. Um, we know that's from Kareem, and we know that that's associated with Velka. And, you know, we're finding out that there's some potentially weird things going on in Lindelt. Archdrake sect, um, you know, Lycia is a little weird, and that, you know, the most of it's d driven by selfishness and the like. So maybe Lindelt is our Kareem. Dark Pine Resin, which we have. Magic Barrier. This miracle is said to shield its caster with the rock's armor and was common amongst the wizard knights of Mira. Hmm. Red Dark Orb. Um, uh, dark Weapon. Falcon the Outcast, who we're speaking to, applied his art to transform magic weapon into a hex. Adds dark damage to the types of damage the weapon already inflicts. Those who chose the choose the path of dark are admonished by all manner of sorcerers, but this does not stop the curious from being drawn to this strangely alluring craft. Well, this is an MA lore, but this is an interesting hex. It actually costs souls to do damage. Oh, these resonant ones. So yeah, you can see that resonant flash was independently developed by Outcast Falcon. Um, so I don't know if it's based on these or if he also created those. And then he also did Resonant Weapon, which is similar to Dark Weapon, but with also the Resonant part, where it uses your souls, which is like an even crazier form of anything. So it says he's an outcast. Maybe we can learn a bit more about that. This land lies closest to the dark. That, that, is, that is why I came here. This kingdom 
collapsed long ago. All that are left are either undead or hollow. Save a few misfits like five cells. <laughs> Pelkin, the outcast, it even says up there, too. I went, I, went to, I went to a great school in the South, but neither sorcery nor pyromancy appealed. I, I, I learned nothing, nothing at all, but it, it was there that I happened upon the dark. It drew me in the nebulous dark. Soon I was drawn to this land where dark runs deeper than anywhere else. So we know that he's from Melfia. He says he's from the south. He went to a great school there. We know about the Melfian Academy. We know that Melfia lies to the south. And we know that they study pyromancy and sorcery there, as evidenced by Curlian. And so he just said he came from Melfia, essentially. And he also mentions that Dark is a very powerful in this land. I wonder why that is. Hexes originated here in ancient times. They were once a form of sorcery, but the practice was lost, then later rediscovered. Those devoted to hexes are a lonely lot, but nevertheless, they give their life to their art. Such is the fate of we practitioners of dark. What drew me to the dark? I do not know it. Hexes are more than mere tools to me. I feel affinity and warmth, something universal, nostalgic even. Those who discover dark realize this and they never come back. Again, just really interesting descriptions of the dark and what drew him to the dark despite the fact that he's lonely and it makes him an outcast this land this kingdom all that are left save a few no matter the... so I believe that's it for him I don't think he says anything new So, let's try to get through this area here. So this is the, um, the area that we uh, saw from outside. With all the windmills and such. Shirts. Huh. Okay, so now they allow you to raise and lower this from over here instead. <laughs> um, I think they dra drop Twinkling or something from my memory, but they also drop their set and such. He threw a thing on that. Um, I'll get to them later. He threw a knife at it and it uh, broke that chest. Or that. Oh my gosh. 
Uh, broke that big pot full of poison, that's what I'm trying to say. Headshot. Ugh. Should have tried to take him out. Spear with an ex with an extended pull offers a very long reach. Traditionally, a weapon of regimental rather than single combat due to its unwieldiness. However, if you can manage to effectively step around an opponent, this will hardly have a chance to hit back. Devotee Scarlet. I might grab her. What's this? Oh, is that the door upstairs? Oh no, that's that. Okay. Okay. Um, sure. Come on, devotee. Scarlet. Oh, interesting. Alright. This is kind of a weird placement for a bonfire. Just gonna do this and then I'm gonna light the torch so yeah um, <clears throat> what are you looking at yeah, there's these messages here impossible but try torch torch your card ahead yeah I mean they really banked on the fact that you would have uh, messages here but um yeah, it burns that, it stops it, and apparently it stops the flow of poison, somehow. Um, so, uh, I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, mannequin mask. Mask of the Mannequins of Harvest Valley, a fickle queen gave them life and tore off their faces. How else could she forgive those who dared gaze upon her? It's really interesting because they do talk about her as being like one of immense beauty. And I think it's funny that like if, if you're beautiful, that is so unfair. No enemy can... Uh, Trigger a trap in this game. But Devotee Scarlet can. And then I was stuck. Mannequin Saber. Interesting. Small curved sword of the mannequins. The peculiar art of puppetry is vestige of the lost, two lost lands. The queen, entranced by poison, used it to beckon unknowing souls to the defiled valley. Hmm. Bashful right. Look, come on, guys. Let's do this. Shush. You idiot. Stay quiet. I'm on the run. Don't give me away. You're a fugitive too, eh? Uh -huh. Yeah. Why else would you be here? It's got death written all over it. You want to climb down here? I can lend you a ladder. But, um... How much can you offer me? Why, yep. I'm trying to help you, you know. Have you no gratitude? Downright rude, really. I, 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 I've, got, I've got a soft heart, so... I, I let you out. This once. 
Well, I only have 2,000, so... Alright. I suppose this guy is, is... Where is he pulling that up from, by the way? Um, I suppose this is supposed to be a charming NPC or someone that you're like, oh, he's whatever, but... Yeah. Uh, go on ahead. I won't offer this deal twice. We also said, oh, if only we had a ladder to that one pit. Oh. Laddersmith Gilligan. Alright, so he's got reinforced club, a whip, claws, a wooden shield, thief stuff, which makes sense, he's on the run, bleeding serum. A jar of carnivorous plant secretions applies bleeding, bleeding to right hand weapon. And he also has this ladder miniature. A small ornamental ladder, a quaint little thing, but only for show. The ornament does not seem to have any particular function and should not be worth much, but it is sold at an exorbitant price. Have you heard? Well, apparently, there's this monster lady, right? The poison, well, does wonders for her body. You know, that health and beauty and that sort of stuff. And I thought only human women were so petty. That creature, she was human once, you know? Yeah. In fact, she was wed to the prince of that nearby castle. But her husband? Uh, he had feelings for another. The princess was desperate and sought eternal beauty. Hoping that it would restore the prince's uh, affection. <laughs> you see what I mean? So, the queen of this land married the prince, but the prince loved someone else and the covetous demon loved the queen as we'll see more and more with descriptions and such but we kind of got that impression you know right before this we fought him and he coveted a princess or whatever uh, unrequited love so this is a massive love triangle going on here in Elkin before long the princess's ire transformed her into a monster now, listen here. When do you think this all happened? Long ago, when this very land was called something else. We say Dranglick now, but... Countless kingdoms have risen and fallen on this very spot. And this won't be the last? Oh, no. That damned hag just can't let her old flame go. She's going to get us all burned. Well, that has a dull meaning there. God almighty. I'm not going to die in this dump. God. Alright. Find it. Really? I mean, he tells us a lot about the the queen, but it's kind of annoying. Oh, so there's a Pharaoh's Lockstone there now as well. That's good. We could use that. And that looks like there's something over here. Uh, what is that? I mean.
Oh, there's an item under there. That's what it was. Um... Bashful Ray is a different color. That's interesting. Uh, we're going to go down here. Oh, now we see Pate again, who apparently has a really crazy ring. And Devotee Scarlet's on top of Pate. We'll just go with that. We went through a lot together. Take this as a token of our friendship. Okay, so the Ring of Thorns. So I guess he does give you that. Don't be shy. They were meant for you. <laughs> well, we meet again. There's treasure this way, but I have a bad feeling about it. I don't quite have the guts myself. <laughs> well... We meet again. There's treasure this way. I don't quite. Okay. Well, let's um, let's read his stuff here. A long spear wielded by Pate. This appears to be a very ordinary spear, but it seems it have accumulated power over a course of countless battles. Um, that could be something about souls giving power to things, and that if you fought a lot with it, you might have some soul power. It's not always advisable to stand out, especially if you have something to hide. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm, we get paid stuff here, so I'm going to kill Pate so I can get Creighton stuff. Pate's favorite great shield appears rather humdrum, but in fact was forged by layering thin sheets of iron in process that creates a shield with excellent defense for its weight. It is not always... Yeah. Meticulously customized. This has been considerably altered. Perhaps it was pillaged. Same. And then... Ring of Thorns he had. Which is something that we had Kirk. Knight Kirk. Dark Wraith had. Ring granted protection by Kreml, god of struggle. The ring spikes drive into the wearer's skin so that each blow taken fuels spite towards the perpetrator. When damage is taken, the ring retaliates and inflicts damage upon the enemy. Alright. Oh yeah, we have to fall down from above. Who's gonna stay there? You guys can fight. Radiant life gem. Crimson water. We have ro rouge water, and now we have crimson water. It does the same thing. Those who have experienced the powerful effect of this dimly lucent red water care not that its very origins are completely unknown. Um, can we fall down here? Well, we can, but that's not what we want. Uh, we want to go there. So I guess I'll try to... <laughs> are you useless? <laughs> like, how could you not take out one mannequin? Trapped. Okay. Great heavy soul arrow, which we've read before that doesn't say anything. Well, 
Perhaps you're more rugged than I thought. In any case, the treasure is yours, since you went ahead, took the leap. I prefer a more cautious approach. It's hard to know who to even trust these days. For instance, I've heard that a man is out for my life. Now, what misunderstanding could have ever led to that? The poor bloke must have quite an imagination. <laughs> you be careful too, my friend. For trust can be a dangerous thing. Well, I don't trust you, Pete. You be careful. Alright. Um, I don't remember what's up this way. Dragon Charm, we got that. Ferris Lockstone, that's good. He knocked her down. And what is this? I don't know if there's anything there. Ugh. I shouldn't have done that. There's an item under here, although I'm not sure what it is. Will this guy get killed if I leave him? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what's up there. I have a feeling like it's probably something, though. For some reason. Can I somehow... Ugh. Forget it. If I... Oh, it's that thing up there, probably. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll go up here. We'll see if there's anything to investigate. Okay, it's just this. That's fine. That's unfortunate. <laughs> I, uh, I was kept trying to block with my shield. I have my thing out.
they hit so many times, and I guess I'm doing the thing again where I don't have any... I don't have any, um... Stability or poise or whatever. I was gonna try to dual wield so that I could just take them out uh, with a couple hits. When there's two, it seems like it's uh, much more difficult. I guess you stagger them? Or like, they put them off guard like that? I mean, that's easier. Oh, I saw another guy come. Was that this? Yeah. Flame butterfly. Because it makes sense, but I don't need that. Oh well. Oh, they changed this up a lot. See where those guys come from. Huh, great. Oh my god. These guys have proved to be so difficult. This, this used to be a petrified something, I think. There are going to be 50 mannequins that jump in on me now. Um, I'm good for now, I think, so... Let's do this. Although, I don't know what's in here. I know there's a Mimic. And there's a Pharaoh's Lockstone, but that just gives me a pool of health, which I don't need. Uh, do I want to even try this? It's probably like way overpowered. Okay. Work Hook and Dark Gauntlets. So we have this hook. <laughs> hook that covers the hand. Clearly not intended as a weapon. Now we have the dark gauntlets. Gauntlets of night subsumed by dark. No one knows the true identity of these men who are said to freely manipulate dark. Old foreign legends describe them as poor souls who chase the lost art of life drain. Yeah, those are the former dark wraiths set. All right, so, um, yeah. Do both of you come? Huh, okay, well that's a gimme.
Graveboard and Mask. Nice. Unlike Dark Souls 1, like, there's a random chance of things dropping, so, like, getting lore on these guys can be sometimes annoying, but luckily you only need to get one item for it to, like, give you the lore that you need. Mask worn by Wardens of the Crypt. No notable effects, designed only to block light. The Wardens of the Crypt watch over the slumbering dead, making sure they are not awoke. Be they king or peasant, wise or dull, rich or poor, the wardens treat them the same. This would have been filled with poison if we did not burn that thing. Now we're going to get Jester Thomas, who's a fun uh, NPC for sure. He always does the it's me gesture. Uh, and you fight him later in the game, and he's tough. Um, and likewise, this whole boss area is full of uh, poison. Well, that's interesting. That's a uh, that attack was like uh, Ornstein. She heals from the poison, and anyway, this is Myth of the Baneful Queen, so obviously, yeah, this is the queen spoken about by by Gilligan, who used poison to make herself pretty, to make the prince, I guess as it's described, um, to like her better. Soul of Mytha, the baneful queen who lives in the earthen peak. The queen sought the king's affection, even poisoning herself to attain beauty, despite the monstrous consequences, all for the compelling madness known as love. So I think it's funny because we meet the covetous demon, who's in love with the queen, who's in love with the king, who's in love with someone else. So we're like going up the story here. Now this is something that people complain about a lot. We were down the bot. We were in the Huntsman's Cops. We went up to the Harvest Valley, all the way up to Earthen Peak, and we go to the top of the tower at Earthen Peak, and then we go up in this elevator. Unless they fixed it. No. So now we go up, 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 like. There shouldn't be anything above the tower, is the uh, point. I mean, for all we know, we're just going to the top of the tower. I'll give you that. But once we get out here, you'll see that we are not at the top of the tower. So people always rage about this aspect. Like, you know, Dark Souls 1, everything's really tight and you can see everything together. Like, this was certainly not at the top of that when we looked up at the uh, at the earth and peak thing from below yes I uh, I don't disagree I think this is a terrible design I was gonna say however but there's no however that's unfortunate all right well I think we'll call it an episode here. We only have one chunk left. Alright, well, we'll uh, pick up here next time. Uh, have a good one. Bye.